आज से अस्सलाम वालेकुम व रहमतुल्लाहि व बरकातहु गुड आफ्टरनून नमस्ते सस्रीकार संगाल दे पखेरा आई एम योर होस्ट डॉक्टर मोहिबुल हक अगेन फ्रॉम रेडियो संगम हियर इन हडर्सफील्ड आवर प्रोग्राम एज यू नो इज माइक्रो बिजनेसेस दैट वी डिस्कस माइक्रो बिजनेसेस एवरी वेनेस्डे बिटवीन 3 एंड 4 so i welcome you all of you once again to this exciting very useful very informative and potentially uh, very beneficial program for all of uh, our listeners whether you are a student you are a housewife or you whether you are an executive whether you are a manager running a business successfully or even if you are a successful business owner you will find hopefully some useful ideas through our talks through sangam radio and through micro business program which is broadcasted on sangam radio every wednesday between 3 and 4 <clears throat> just a little bit of background about myself if you have uh, missed my previous programs i am a senior lecturer teaching entrepreneurship small business management and up to some extent human resource management in huddersfield business school university of huddersfield i have been uh, associated with the sangam radio for a couple of months now presenting micro business program every wednesday between 3 and 4 our studio hotline number is uh, 014 at 4 at 17705 if you want to get in touch with us you can also get in touch with us through whatsapp messaging and the number for whatsapp messaging is 0744202155 the best way to listen to sangam radio i would suggest this is what i do when i am not presenting my program is download the app sangam radio a uh, radio sangam from the app store and uh, you can listen to our programs live there and then if you have missed any for any reason uh, any program including my program then you can go to the app go to menu and uh, click on listen again so this program is called uh, the business and marketing show right so what we going to discuss today is uh, something which every person will find useful which every person faces on daily basis every day it's not uh, it's not literally limited to a business environment it can be any environment where if you interact with the people then this program today is basically for you guys so everybody in our lives we interact with the people in offices in business in family in running a state running a business so public dealing is really an important uh, uh, really important activity of uh, every one of us but of course particularly because this is a micro business program so we will discuss this aspect from a business point of view the particular topic that we are going to discuss today is actually from one of uh, our research where i was uh, an author uh, i was primary author uh, but i have a team of uh, academics that i write with they are basically scattered all over the world some of them in our france some are then in new zealand others are uh, in other countries but most of them of course within the uk so we published this article in a good journal called the journal of business research in 2021 the title of the article is compassionate customer service in ethnic minority micro businesses so here you go we are talking about quite important keywords compassion so we talking about compassion what compassion means especially in a customer service environment and we are talking about ethnic minority micro businesses of course in the context of the united kingdom especially the north of england west yorkshire humberside that type of area so let's dig in uh, to this research the what we wanted to do and what we found and what it means for people like uh, like me like you 
and for what it means for uh, people who are uh, responsible for policy making on a uh, gov government level and what it means for business owners and managers who need to deal uh, with the businesses on daily basis so i will share some of uh, our findings uh, with you and then uh, we will see uh, how we can make sense of uh, these findings firstly why micro businesses and why ethnic mi minority micro businesses again our argument me and my uh, colleagues some of my colleagues that we focus on uh, micro business research is uh, we have uh, this, this 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 there is this notion in academia among mainstream scholars that micro businesses either do not generate any research worthy data or the uh, the rdr data is basically not accessible that's why mainstream scholars focus on large organizations where they can easily get lot of uh, data a big chunk of data uh, uh, and then their analysis becomes uh, in a way easier i would not say that it's easier uh, than other research but generally it's uh, is more convenient but micro businesses since micro businesses do not need to report their uh, details their data to any authority because uh, they generally less earn less than the threshold so therefore they do not have to declare uh, their earnings as such micro businesses most of them uh, so therefore they do not have to officially report their data or their income are the detail of their business to any body therefore their, their data is generally remains hidden the other aspect is micro business some micro businesses of course not all uh, the owners and the managers uh, in some micro businesses probably majority of them are not highly qualified so therefore they do not interact uh, too much with the external world uh, and of course in addition to uh, their regular customers therefore they do not trust any external bodies including researchers and they are not willing in general terms to share their data with others however if you are an insider which i am uh, to some extent because before i became an academic i used to work in ethnic minority micro business sector in the uk for 16 years so i have this network of my uh, friends and uh, colleagues uh, that uh, i can have access to them and i can have access to their data because they trust me and hopefully i'm uh, i am trustworthy in that sense uh, so there is a, of course a way uh, to get uh, to their data and to have access to them the other reason that mainstream scholars ignore micro businesses is uh, they think in micro businesses individually do not contribute substantially or do not make significant contribution uh, to the economy in general which is actually a misperception because uh, our reading of uh, existing literature uh, informs us that one in three private sector businesses in the uk uh, is uh, micro business uh, which is uh, the figure or the scenario the picture is more or less the same in our other economies throughout the world so it's not only that that one in every three private sector businesses is a micro business uh, but they make a significant contribution uh, to the economy so we also found that uh, recent studies in the uk have shown that when we talk about ethnic minority businesses uh, that small businesses are more ethnic minority especially ethnic minority micro businesses are more innovative than non ethnic minority or ethnic majority uh, businesses in any economy but this is this finding is especially within the united kingdom context uh, this is where our research also lies uh the our our the other our arguments that we focus on ethnic minority micro businesses uh, is that 
these businesses although they make a significant contribution and they have greater potential of uh, growth and of being innovative uh, to other types of businesses uh, but they also face problems which are more severe than other types of businesses uh, because they do not have relationships with the banks with the financial institutions their relationships are mostly informal uh, with any type of external parties and when they face problems like the credit crunch came followed by covid-19 uh, so we believe they suffered more uh, than other types of businesses what that means is if they suffer more they start closing down uh, it has a, a domino effect on their families and local communities because these businesses provide important sources of uh, employment to local businesses i think i i must uh, make a disclaimer here that i must warn you and i inform you that not warn you as said but inform you that through my talk today at times you might feel that i am reading from notes or i am lecturing so this this will be true in 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 a sense because i of course i got this article in front of me which we published in 2021 and i am sharing uh, key information from that article with you so i might be reading at times from the article itself uh, so uh, because it's not an, an interactive session it's not like a university teaching uh, style of environment we are in uh, so you might feel that i'm just uh, lecturing uh, but you can make a note of it if you have any questions i told you whatsapp number you can whatsapp uh, to me and if i cannot reply now while i'm presenting uh, i will definitely make sure i will get back to you separately uh, after the program i repeat that number the whatsapp number that you can get in touch with us is 0734202155 just a reminder that you are listening to sangam radio i am your host dr mohibul haq from university of huddersfield uh, huddersfield business school Uh, i should also tell you if you want to listen to radio in your car or somewhere else uh, you can and we are on 107.9 fm and 94.7 fm just to remind you again the best way to listen to radio sangam is uh, downloading radio sangam app from the app store okay so let's come back to our discussion compassionate customer service in ethnic minority uh, businesses so where we stopped is uh, why ethnic minority uh, businesses why should we focus on ethnic minority businesses uh, why i focus at least in my research and in my talk uh, through sangam radio on every wednesday between 3 and 4 specifically speaking we found that there are Uh, 5.6 million micro businesses uh, which represent 5.6 million micro businesses in the uk right which represent over 95.7% of all private sector businesses so you can see the number of micro businesses in the uk in absolute terms is uh, 5.6 just over 5.6 million Uh, which is 97.5% of all private sector businesses in the uk so you can see the huge a big chunk chunk of all businesses in the united kingdom are micro businesses and wherever you go in other economies and other countries uh, you will see the picture more or less similar no being a, being so large in number although individually they are very small micro businesses uh, contribute approximately 33% of private sector employment and 22% private sector turnover so which means 
the private sector turn over the our economy but the economy generates from the private sector in a year in the uk 22% of that comes from micro businesses and micro businesses offer 33% of all private sector employment so you can see they can they contribute very significantly uh, to our economy uh, in the united kingdom and of course as i said uh, the picture is more or, more or less similar in other economies others can, therefore these, these are the reasons uh, this is one reason of course a couple of reasons which i told you there are many reasons that micro businesses keep families in con, in in con, uh, families in in intact uh, they help to sustain local communities uh, so therefore most people or at least some people consider micro businesses as engines of growth in an economy like the united kingdom so they actually run the micro businesses run uh, the economy uh, as such in our research we actually found that in ethnic minority micro businesses uh, co ethnic culture cultural sen sensitivities challenge the ongoing business survival right because there is this debate here that big businesses uh, do lot of uh, research and development they spend a lot of money on research and development so they generate knowledge they generate uh, innovation in a way are they lead innovation uh, therefore uh, they are Uh, successful because primarily because they have lot of resources to rely on and then you utilize these resources our aim our objective was uh, how co-ethnic culture uh, can be a useful resource uh, for ethnic minority micro businesses which helps ethnic minority micro businesses to be successful in the long term and which helps to sustain this success in other words we call it a sustainable success or competitive advantage uh, in the long run so what we did is we took the idea of uh, cultural capital uh, from uh, the french uh, sociologist called bourdieu uh, i'm sorry if i miss uh, pronounced this name is french i do not know french Uh, so that's why basically we we uh, discussed that we borrowed the cultural capital aspect from bodio and combine combined it with the resource based view so the resource based view is again generally applicable to large organizations where organizations have unique resources they are very valuable they cannot be imitated they cannot be copied and the, including their strategies therefore this concept of uh, vrio valuable rare inimitable and non substitutable uh, the idea is uh, then if organ an organization has this type of resources in their disposal then this organization will have a uh, long term success and which organization can make its success sustainable because competitors will be unable uh, to copy its strategies and its resources so our argument here is that there's fine large organizations do that good luck to them but since uh, micro businesses do not have a uh, lot of resources they also they lack uh, in resources severely uh, but they have other type of intangible resources such as cultural capital so what is cultural capital then right so let's uh, have a look what cultural capital uh, is Uh, a cultural capital is generally we the, the idea of uh, uh, culture uh, being a form of capital is uh, cultural capital represents occupational cul culture consisting of skills knowledge attitudes values belief systems and dispositions of a group of people that are specific to that group right so cultural capital is a combination of all these things 
it's a type of uh, occupational culture of a community and uh, which consists of skills attitudes knowledge and belief systems no these uh, skills knowledge and belief systems are specific are, are are relevant to a specific community which lives in a specific area or which belongs to a specific region or country in the world and then it they exercise this these type of belief systems uh, are uh, their skills uh, their customs and their attitudes their value systems the how they go about their uh, daily routine lives and if these things are practiced over a period of time then it becomes a useful resource which can lead an organization to sustainable success so i, I will explain to you uh, shortly with the examples i think it makes sense here that to define or to at least to try to understand what we mean by ethnicity here because we we dis, we defined culture as a capital uh, with in the context context of co-ethnic so ethnicity is generally it is uh, generally and commonly accepted social and cultural categories through which individual that differentiate themselves from the majority of population in a particular context so in other words an ethnicity is a group of people uh, where they differentiate themselves from other people in a particular context based on whatever we discussed earlier on based on their belief systems based on their customs based on value systems based on their dispositions based on their skills knowledge so based on these concepts this group of people they differentiate themselves uh, from other groups of people in a particular context an example is for example the south asian people uh, in west yorkshire let's say they differentiate themselves from the mainstream white community or from uh, white people from other european countries or even uh, black people from uh, caribbean or from africa based on their value systems that what they eat what they wear during their weddings or other uh, functions and where they go to practice their religion so these people were particular eat particular type of food they wear particular type of attire dress and they practice uh, things in life uh, which may be uh, different uh, to other people for example how they treat uh, their elders how they treat uh, their children how they treat their women how they treat their men can be different i'm not saying that it's uh, it's better than you know other but other people do i'm also not saying that it's worse than what other people do all i'm saying is it can be different than what other communities do so based on these things they differentiate themselves from other people therefore uh, they consider themselves uh, and a particular ethnic group and others also consider them to be different in many ways uh, but they can be they can be an ethnic minority our ethnic majority but in this context south asians in the uk are in a minority so they are ethnic minority people within the context of cultural capital ethnicity uh, it may also be very useful if we can uh, if we can define or we can try to understand social capital because uh, bourdieu talks about forms of capital and the two forms of capital are cultural capital and social capital uh, the, the two are very much interlinked to each other so social capital is different of course from cultural capital cultural capital originates from value systems belief systems how people uh, behave what type of knowledge they have in a particular context uh, social capital is uh, mostly uh, depends on relationships and interdependencies and connections between people based on mutual trust confidence 
respect and a reciprocity so basically social capital is how people how people deal with each other how people connect with each other so this connection and this dealing is based on interdependency mutual trust and the confidence that have on each other uh, the respect that have in each other and the reciprocity of the respect the exchange between each other so this is basically uh, this is the crux of uh, our article that we did some research we interviewed 43 people uh, within west yorkshire which is i tell you uh, which is uh, the councils of uh, uh, leeds bradford calderdale kirklees uh, these, these are west yorkshire also includes uh, wakefield but we did not interview anybody from wakefield because we did not find enough people and our focus was on ethnic minority uh, micro business owners and managers uh, within uh, west yorkshire so from these four uh, counties or councils uh, that uh, we did our research and then we found what we found which i will i will, i'm going to discuss uh, with you right i were also wanted to highlight uh, the importance of uh, micro uh, businesses and ethnic minority micro businesses within this particular region uh, with respect to self employment among identified ethnic groups in in england so we found that uh, and other other uh, statistics basically government statistics uh, uh, we found from government statistics we did not do research uh, ourselves into this matter so we found from government statistics uh, that out of after london and the west midlands uh, the self self employed people among ethnic minority uh, people are the highest in yorkshire and uh, humber side for example the self employed amongst identify ethnic groups abo angus all people basically identifiable mainstream white people european people black people chinese people so the south asians in london is 9.33% in west midlands is 9.42% and in yorkshire and humber side is 7.17% which is of course higher than uh, the south west south east north west north east and east midlands and in the east uh, so let's have a commercial break and then we will continue our discussion uh, stay tuned in don't go anywhere uh, i will we will continue after the commercial break <laughs> 